So this new OpenAI deep research thing with ChatGPT, you can actually kind of do it straight in open web UI, you know, without even fancy programming or working. No, it's not as deep, but babe, I, I, swear, I swear it's deep enough. Okay, I swear it's going to be deep enough. So uh, let me just show you kind of how it works, how you can set it up, because you need some uh, some plugins for open web UI. Uh, and then we'll talk about the limitations and how I see the future of this. How would you, what would you do to make this even better and a lot closer to the actual deep research thing. So let me dive in here. Uh, this is what I want. So uh, here's a little demo. I am talking to Gemini Flash Experimental. I just wanted to, it to run quickly. So I asked it about something and it did a bunch of research and it uh, wrote me a summary. So in this case, I was asking it, okay, please perform in-depth research and write a report about the cognitive benefits, uh, both long-term, short-term of nicotine supplementation, including details about dosages. That's just, that's the query, right? It's something I'm, I'm interested in learning about. And then it's there now comes one of the, the key points here is we need to give it a little bit more information about how it's going to tackle the problem. In this case, I need to tell it, okay, I need you to do like a search on the internet and then read these websites and then summarize what you find and see, you know, contradictory information, missing information. And I want you to do that for each of the sources you find. And then when you still need some more information, do another web search and just continue with, I'm saying a maximum of five web searches in this example. But of course, this is just a prompt. You can just adjust it however you want. After this, write out a markdown formatted report, including citations. So we just need to give it a little more guidance on how to do it. And then it, it kind of works. Now, the second ingredient is a function that I created that I wrote for uh, open web UI. I call it the native tool calling pipe. I'll put the, the thing in the description. Also check out the description because I really think this should be part of the like the actual core of open web UI code. I hope I'll get some time at some point to to refactor the open web UI and, and put that in there. But for now, you can only use it as a as a separate function. So what what this does is it actually <laughs> I made a video back when tool calling was just first announced, literally the, the, an hour after it was announced, it's one of my more popular videos. And it's just, it's more than a year ago, they got, these guys still haven't implemented this. But well, anyway, that's, that's, that's how it is. So, okay, by default, open web UI, when you use functions or tools, so when you enable something like here, I'll talk about the, the research one I built. Uh, when you enable this, when it's answering your question, it's, it's going to give the model the an option to call a tool instead of answering. And so it'll call the tool and then it will use the result of the tool to run its response. Now, that just limits you to one single tool call and that does not allow the LLM to reason over, let's say in this case, the result of the web search to decide what it needs to do next, either another web search or do something else. So with the native tool calling pipe, we're actually using the built-in functionality that these LLMs have, uh, OpenAI and Thropic and DeepSeek, they all have it. And so what you see here, if you scroll down, so it's just kind of going over this, hey, let's, let's dive into this. Okay, this is my plan of action. And it's like, okay, let's get started with our first web search. And you see here it executed search web. So it ran the function, but it's not done. So I can see the what was inside. But when I go down, I see, okay, so we've got this. And now it's summarizing these things. It's it's writing it down. Okay, that's so far, it's kind of the same. But now it's, okay, now it realizes what else we need to search for. So it executed another search the web, nicotine, cognitive enhancement, dosage review, uh, human, um, you know, it, it's doing its thing. And then we got the result again. And again, it's doing a couple more web searches. Here's another one. And here's, okay, that's it. So. Uh, this is just a this is just a report that it wrote. So it is doing kind of the same process. I would call this semi-agentic, right? It, it's not it's not fully automated AI, but it's it's doing the thing. And so we really need that native tool calling pipe that can let the LLM decide what tools to run over time and and do it a few times after each other. So you do actually need to install that function. So if I go to the admin panel here, this would be you go to functions and you just click the, the little plus icon and then you paste it. Actually, I think if you go to the direct link, there's a little get thing and you fill in the URL of your uh, endpoint or you just copy code, click plus and install it. Then because of the way I had to build this, you do have to reset up your OpenAI endpoints API key and make a list of the models that you're using. 
Uh, you have to put it inside of the valves. I'm not going to open it because you will see my key. Uh, so you just need to click the little cogwheel and fill it in there. I'm using the open router one so I can still use Anthropic and Google. They, they all just work. It all just works perfectly. Uh, but so I'm a big fan of my own. I mean, I really needed this. So uh, that's that's the one ingredient. And the other the other ingredient is a little tool that I made. I just call it research. It basically is a mashup of two of the tools that I found, two of the most popular ones. Uh, this website is so slow. Uh, <laughs> so there is the, if you look at the tools, there is one that does a web search. I think I took the web search and then I use a web scrape the, with Gina Reader. It's an API, it's actually free to use and it extracts the, the main content of a website. I just don't want to bother having to process and parse the HTML, which I think the web search does by default, but I switched it over to using Gina Reader. So I just kind of mashed up those two tools and put them in one that I called re uh, research. So then if I want to do my actual research, let's do a new chat. And I would just make sure I need to pick one of the native native tool ones, so it's empty for a moment, mini, whatever, uh, click more, enable the research. And now I can give the prompt that I was telling you before. So Okay, well, that works. You saw that something came out, uh, as I said, is not as deep. So, okay, what's, what's going on there? Now, the OpenAI, the official ChatGPT deep research, that is fine-tuned on doing these tasks. So, for one, it's O3, it's a full O3, which means it has a lot of time that they can think about. It's super intelligent. It writes long things. So... I haven't tried it with the DeepSeek Reasoner, with R1, because DeepSeek these days, the API is just down. <laughs> Everyone's using it. But I'm pretty sure you could do it, or maybe even with the Gemini Thinking Experimental. So that, that, that would work probably. But so that's, that's one difference, that it, it's a way more powerful model behind it. And the second is that it, there is a little bit more code on the back end. So if I would share this, I think that would work? No, that doesn't work. There we go. So uh, what's happening here is that I am asking a question to the chat, right? It's and then it's, it, it's, it's going in here, it's writing some response. There's a lot of latency here. Sorry for the low resolution, by the way, I'll make this a little thicker. I'd need to pay for this app, whatever. <laughs> and then it says, okay, I need to uh, run this function, right? There's a little play button and then it, it does a search. Right? And then it continues thinking a little bit more and then it does a search again, you know, th th that whole thing, right? So, okay, there's a couple of things here. The one is that actually when, you're, when you do your first web search and you, you, you investigate the contents, right? So I'm asking the model, please summarize what you learn, your key findings and what else you need to know. At this point, in terms of the context, we don't really need the full website content anymore, which is still in here if you do this approach. So the full content of each of those web pages that it was reading is inside of it. That means that your context window, especially if you start doing a lot of web searches, I think this was like only 15 web pages or something. So that's okay. And it's Gemini, so it, it can handle a lot of context. But if you're doing a lot of things, then you will probably see that the context window gets filled up pretty quickly. What they are probably doing in the back end is that they, they they take this part where they they spawn a new kind of separate O3 model that's reading through the web pages, summarizing the results, and then they just kind of throw out this stuff, uh, this these these literal web results when it's continuing the prompt. So that way you get your context window a little shorter. The second thing that they can do is when it when it's searching through or reading through multiple pages or knows that it needs to do multiple searches, well. You can just do all of them in parallel, right? Because these are now at this point, this this search and this the summarization, these are all these are all separate bots that are some bots, you know, instances of the LLM that are spawned. So at this point, you can run that in parallel. So that's the second, or let's say the third thing that the the OpenAI deep search would actually deep research would actually be doing. So again, to recap. Three things. One, it's a way more powerful model, but you'll be able to replicate that sort of with DeepSeek R1. Uh, the second one is that they are running, they are compacting the the context, which I think in OpenWeb UI you would be able to do that with with another custom function that just is specifically built for this. So if you do that, post it in the comments, please. And the third one is that it can run some of these things in parallel because it's spawning separate LLMs to do specific parts of this task. So. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. I hope this was 
enlightening to you. I hope this was interesting and a little bit entertaining. If it was, please subscribe because uh, I'll be making more stuff like this. Leave a comment so I know because I, I just sometimes make things about random stuff that I like. So, <laughs> so give me feedback about the things that you are interested in. Uh, check out the native tool calling function. Uh, I'm pretty proud of it. Uh, there's a, quite a few people who are, who are liking it. So that's, that's really great. Hopefully it'll end up in the core open web UI soon. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.